Okay, it's 11 o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and um, get us started. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody, for today's Counselor Connect session. My name is Amanda Callhan. I am a school counseling consultant, and I am the coordinator for the Counselor Connect initiative. We are very excited for today's session, which is navigating the wellness of students and staff and responding to community concerns regarding SEL. Um, a very hot topic um, in our state and really across the nation right now. So we're really excited to hear from Christy. Before we start, I do wanna share a little bit about Counselor Connect. Um, Counselor Connect kicked off uh, last year, beginning of 2020. It falls under the Keep Indiana Learning umbrella. Both Counselor Connect and Keep Indiana Learning are operated by the Central Indiana Educational Service Center, which is located in Indianapolis. While CISC is in Indianapolis, this initiative, um, the reach is statewide. So all of our professional learning support and resources are offered to all schools across the state. Counselor Connect is a community of practice for student service professionals. It is led by practitioners through four Counselor Connect tactic teams. Those teams include a comprehensive school counseling team, post-secondary options, social emotional learning and student and family advocacy. Today's speaker, Christy, is a part of our SEL tactic team, and we are very excited for her presentation. So speaking of Christy, I don't think she needs much of an introduction. We all know her and love her from her time at the Department of Education, um, where she was a wonderful support to all of us um, across the state. Um, Christy is now, actually, she's no longer with the department. She is now the Director of School Counseling and Mental Health with Center Grove School Corporation, just south of Indianapolis. And we are thrilled to have her with us today to discuss a very hot topic. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Christy to get us started. Awesome, thanks so much, Amanda. Um, thank you guys for taking the time. I know the school world is busy, so I appreciate you being here. Would love um, for you to introduce yourselves and let us know where you're from. Um, that just helps me to make sure that I am being relevant to the things you would like to hear today. Just your first name, where you're from, and maybe your role as I pull up our presentation. But as Amanda shared, um, I'm Christy Berger. I'm the Director of School Counseling and Mental Health here in Center Grove Schools. Previously, I was at the Department of Education for about three and a half years as the uh, Director of Social, Emotional, and Behavior Wellness. And I came back to Center Grove. I had been here for 10 years as a school social worker, um, the elementary level for six years, and then did school counseling and at the middle school for three years before I um, went to the department. So, so excited to be here with you all. I joined uh, back in Center Grove on June 1st, kind of when things were starting to make their way down to my specific district. So um, I know some of uh, our Northern districts and um, other districts across the state were hearing a lot of concerns around SEL and critical race theory. And that started to pick up as I came to Center Grove. And so I really wanna share today, just our plan, the things that we've done, the things that we hope to do, um, have a, some resources for you. Always feel free to take and use however you would like. Um, I think part of the great thing about Counselor Connect in the community um, that Amanda has helped to build is that we can share resources. And so um, that is my hope today that you get some resources that you can use and um, use with your staff, use with your uh, community members, however that is uh, needed. So appreciate you all putting in where you are from. Thank you so much. And Amanda did put in the slides presentation. So you all should be able to view that again so that you will have the links um, to use at your own leisure. So our objectives of our time today, we're gonna to just talk about the district uh, journey here in Center Grove. I'll also share some things that I've heard about other districts, just the unique role I was able to play when I was at the state and being able to see how different communities do different things and how that's been successful for them. I will provide some resources to help with SEL implementation and then also talk about how we are addressing the adult well-being of implementation which that adult well-being kind of leads us perfectly into um, what I would like to caption as the past 21 months of education and how we have had to work hard to do some things. So you may, if you're a Friends fanatic, uh, this is like my favorite scene, so maybe you have felt this too. Here we go. All right, ready? Turn. Okay. Turn. Turn. Oh, I, <laughs> I don't think we can turn anymore. <laughs> I just don't think it's gonna fit. Oh, 
yeah, it will. Come on, up, 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 up. <laughs> yes. Here we go. Pivot. 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 Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. So hopefully I have some friends fans out there, but I do feel like this has been education in general, not just with SEL, but with masks, without masks, with virtual, non-virtual, we have been constantly pivoting how we are providing and supporting our students and our families. And so I think that it just describes perfectly what we've done. Um, oops. And I think that, um, it's just a good reminder that we have to pivot at times. And so that's been a part of our journey here at Center Grove. We've really been intentional in pivoting our work um, and making sure that we're being as proactive as we can and trying to be ahead of different groups as they come with different concerns. So as I talk today, these are kind of the factors that I want to hit to make sure that I encourage you uh, to do something similar, whichever works for your community and just the things that have worked for us when we have been able to navigate this space. So, so important to provide the why with your data. And I'm gonna share how we share our data, what data we use and how we feel like that's connected um, to our community and our students and our parents. Um, talk about the importance of common language, talk about your current reality, and then seeing how you can be as transparent as possible. That has been um, the nonstop concern that I continue to hear regardless of what part of the country you're in, is that parents really feel as though we are not being transparent and that there's a hidden agenda that our schools are doing. Um, and so however we can just over abundantly be transparent with what we're doing in our classrooms, I think really helps to settle some of the nerves of those who are concerned. So I wanted to share just our timeline. I'm not gonna go into all of this in detail, but this was something that we shared with our families. So we shared uh, with our families, actually this work started for us uh, a couple of years before 2020. And so when I provided to a board meeting, our timeline, it started actually when the Lilly School Counseling Grant came out several years ago. We applied for that, got a lot of data. So we showed parents, hey, this has been an ongoing thing. But for the, um, the purpose of our time today, I really wanted to show you the things that we have been doing to really help support our community and come around that. So we have presented, I have presented to our school board, our plan for social emotional learning, what that looks like in Center Grove, what we plan to do with that, um, which obviously at a school board meeting, you're sharing with your community as well and questions were, be able, were able to be asked at that time. I did meet initially with two of our board members, um, two of them who had the most concerns to get some feedback from them saying, here's what I plan to share. What questions do you think our community might have? That helped me to be prepared for questions that I might get, get or angles that I maybe had not thought about. And so that was really helpful. Um, we also held a parent information session and I'll show you um, what we put together for that. But after the board meeting, we wanted to provide an opportunity for parents to ask questions about social emotional learning, but we didn't want it to be in a forum where it was just yelling and giving people platform because we felt like that's what people were seeking and we didn't think that that ever anything positive ever came from that. So we had our parents submit questions. Um, <clears throat> The Monday before we gave that uh, family night presentation on a Thursday, we answered every single question that they asked, and we had it in a PowerPoint presentation that we gave to families, and then myself, our assistant superintendent of teaching and learning, who's my boss, and our superintendent honestly sat up there, read every question, and answered every question, so that not only did they see the answer and they had a hard copy of it, but they heard us verbally say that. So we did that at the beginning, and then we had our wonderful administrators um, facilitate conversation at the table. Did any other questions come up for you? Any other concerns come up for you? They took those and we um, took those questions, addressed those and posted those on our website as well. And I will say of the families that came to listen that night um, and to learn left feeling much better and honestly left very um, encouraged and provided us with some uh, positive feedback and excitement around our kids getting this information. We've been really intentional on the professional development for all of our staff and our stakeholders. So we wanna make sure again, that we're all speaking the same language, uh, making sure that we are you know, being intentional with what SEL looks like in Center Grove. And it doesn't matter what it looks like in this state or that state or that community. This is what it looks like here. Um, our clergy is a very big stakeholder 
um, member in our community. We have 26 churches that we work really closely with that our superintendent meets with frequently. And so I came to one of their meetings and walked them through what SEL is. We walked through two different lessons. I'm going to show you those lessons that we walked through so that they could hear what is being taught in our school so that they could get an understanding. And as parents came with concerns, they could uh, share what they know. And it was also a great opportunity because they were seeing a rise in concerns and mental health needs. And so we talked about how we could partnership together. And then um, in January and February next semester, we will be hosting parent night, family night, SEL activities to encourage parents to come with their kids to do some different activities. So we'll talk about that here in a moment. So data is key. I said, you have to build your why. And so um, I've been looking as much as I can to find any new data from the pandemic because a lot of the data I have was pre-pandemic. And I think it's only, um, we're only starting to see the effects of the pandemic and which only encourages us needing more support than we have even now. And so any of that data that I can find, I'm always sharing with our community, whether that is in a presentation whether that is in, we have like a community uh, newsletter that goes home monthly and sometimes weekly in some of the principal's uh, buildings, we're sharing data completely and all the time. Um, we look at the importance of sharing national data, state data, and local data. And so this is just data that I have shared as, you know, why is whole child wellness so important in Indiana? I'm not going to read through all of this with you, but what I will say is we use the IYI Kids Count Data Book of uh, 2021, and the new one should be coming out in February. So we'll have updated data that will be post-pandemic. So all of this information is pre-pandemic, but it helps to lay that foundation as to why this is so important. What are our Indiana youth telling us? Um, also, if you're familiar with uh, the YRBS, the Youth Risk Behavior Survey, which is where we received um, these two suicide data points, the second cause of death and us being uh, ranked nationally for students with suicide plans, that was from that data, which we have not had since 2015. But thanks to many of you on this call that championed um, our schools to take the youth risk behavior survey, we will have new data um, for that. And I was actually on the call this morning with someone from the health department and they think in the next four months, we should see that data. So we can see, are we seeing any trends? Are we seeing any new developments that we need to make sure that we address? I also wanted to make sure we looked at that national data. So here is data that tells us why this is important, how students receive this and uh, are successful with school offered services. It helps to show why this is important in schools because a lot of times we'll have families um, who will say, well, I get that some kids have mental health concerns, but not all kids. So why do you need this for all kids? And so we share, yes, that tier three, that community mental health support is for identified some kids. However, SEL is tier one for all students, and it's not only prevention to mental health well-being, but it's also prevention to suicide prevention, um, bullying prevention, drug and substance abuse prevention, and really laying that important groundwork. We also talk about how mental health is a journey, and we may be really well one day and not the next day. All of our students are going to face some type of stress and conflict in their life, and SEL skills provides those coping strategies to help them, which is why we think that it is important to teach at school. There's a really great video that I'll find at the end, if you haven't seen it with Sharon Hoover, um, where she talks about why schools need to be involved in mental well-being when schools are in um, the business of educating, right? And so she talks about that, and I think she does a great job explaining. And so I've shared that video several times with stakeholders as well. My community is um, specific and they are very dedicated and love their community and really want to be intentional on their community. So sometimes when I share national or state data, they're like, okay, but what's our data look like here in Center Grove? And so we have started to collect last year, uh, before I was here, they had started collecting the suicide assessment data, data. So we use the Columbia screener here and we looked at how many students we were administering a Columbia screener to. And the number here is um, the number of screeners, not the number of students. So one student may have 10, one student may have just one, but here you'll see the number of screeners and they're divided by elementary and secondary. And we are comparing last year's to this year. I don't know um, about you all, but we feel like we are doing many more 
assessments this year with our students and parents and people will ask, okay, well, suicide assessment is more mental health. Yes, it's a mental health concern, but if our kids don't have the SEL skills of regulation, connection, and collaboration, then they aren't able to put in some of those resilience factors and coping strategies so that they don't get to the point where they feel like suicide is their only option. And so we've been really intentional with sharing this data as frequently as we can with parents, teachers. We've yet to share it with students. Um, we are talking about what that looks like because we want to make sure that we are um, delivering that in an appropriate way, but we want to show our students like here are, here are what your peers are struggling with. And so how can we kind of come around one another? Um, so our students will be involved in our whole child district committee, which I'll share here in a few moments. Also, we collect the panorama data and maybe in your district as ours was that there was a lot of questions around the panorama survey. What is this? Um, is this identifying my students mental health needs? Does this tag them forever? Um, are they getting private information? So again, <clears throat> we were being as transparent as we could and explaining what it is. We shared with them, here are the 14 questions that we ask your students. If you would like to know your student's response, you can contact me because I have access to every student's individual response. So we have shared that with parents that they have requested that. Um, our district only um, had identified that they wanted to start in the areas of classroom effort, grit and emotion regulation. Um, as that ties to some of the SEL work we're doing, but also looking futuristically and knowing um, that there is a new possible GPS data dashboard um, and some of those characteristics that are being spoken to on that dashboard are communication, connection, teamwork, work ethic. I think some of this panorama data could be a way to measure that in the future. Um, and so looking at how we can use that to support our students. And so again, showing that local level data, sharing with parents that we're administering it, sharing with parents why we're administering it and what we do with that. And so we had, um, we, our parents can always opt out. And this year, because it was such a um, hot topic, uh, the first year they did it, they had about 20 kids opt out. This year we had 484 students opt out, which is a lot. Um, but when we have 10,000 kids that we administer, cause we do use Panorama K-12, it's, you know, it is a percentage, but it's not the entire district. And so we still feel like we get a lot of good information from our Panorama data. Um, I forgot to mention that I am pretty informal and as questions come up, um, Amanda is checking the chat box and um, so am I trying to kind of multitask. So if questions come up or you wanna stop me on certain things, please do um, so that we can make sure we address your question right away. So again, sharing this panorama data, sharing this with um, stakeholders, parents, kids, adults, teachers, educators, anybody that will listen. Um, another resource that was shared with me was out of Virginia Beach School District. And so they have done a really great job um, <clears throat> at addressing social emotional learning and being able to kind of hit that head on. And so they actually put out a uh, white paper almost to their family and their community. And they brought in some other great key data points and are continuing to show in the research where that lands. Because sometimes I'll have family members reach out and say, well, I have research that shows that, that that isn't true. And so I always encourage them to share that with me. I want to read their research. I will explain the research that I have read. Um, but being able to, again, have those data points to show that SEL is an evidence-based high yield instruction strategy truly really helps to have parents see the importance of it. So I just wanted to give you another example of um, national data points that you could use that are linked here within the presentation um, as you're working with families. So then the next thing, so we did our why, we established the data, but our next thing was really working on establishing that common language. And as Amanda shared, I, for the last few years, had worked at the state and worked really closely with CASEL and I respect them. I value uh, their knowledge. I value their content. They are my go-to. Um, but in all of this, CASEL has become, become taboo as well. And a lot of that has been around how CASEL has talked about transformative SEL. And in our community, that has been a struggle because transformative SEL speaks directly to equity and diversity, which are um, families who have concerns 
think that that then links to critical race theory. And so we've had to talk about that. We've had to have those conversations of, yes, we use CASEL as a resource. CASEL isn't a program. We use them as a resource and they are research-based and evidence-based and we are gonna use them because they're best practice. But in Center Grove right now, we are not doing what they call transformative SEL because we have not started that journey in our district. So we continue to be clear about what that looks like and how that looks. Um, and so the first thing we wanted to do was make sure that our school personnel was speaking um, the same language. So one of the things that I did, which is linked here, is we created a, um, a one pager, which we gave to uh, principals, assistant principals, asked them to print it out for back to school night. Um, so that if parents came, because that back to school night was still when this was pretty hot topic and heavy, um, and people were pretty vile, vital and our teachers felt like they were on guard. And so I wanted them to have something to read from um, as opposed to saying, oh, well, yeah, I do SEL and it looks like this. Well, no, that you might not understand that that would make a parent upset. So we wanted to have, this is what it is in Center Grove. And so we looked and we have our definition, which is the castle definition. We talked about it being a proactive and preventative approach to mental well-being. We tied a lot of that into COVID. We talked about here are the current supports that we have in Center Grove. This is what SEL looks like in Center Grove. This is what mental health looks like here. And then we really just had our why statement. Why is this important? Why do we believe that this is something we should be doing and continue doing? And this was all we wanted them to see. I didn't want them to go into specific strategies or specific books that they use. If they had parents that had questions, they could hand them this resource and or they could just read from this resource. And so we did that early on to make sure again that we were speaking all the same language. Then in addition to that, and I did not um, link this, but I'm gonna pull it up really quick and I can uh, get you guys the link. Um, we did a 101 uh, PD presentation for all of our staff. Now it was not, um, it was not mandated that it come or required. We did it before after school, but we provided them with PGP points and it was really um, beneficial for them to hear what we were doing. And we had a really great turnout. Um, and again, we went over what is Center, Center Grove's SEL and then what are some approved strategies here in Center Grove that connect on the skills that we're looking at. So I will link that here. Um, but that was really helpful. And I did forget at the beginning of the year, so our back to school night before teachers, our back to school night, or excuse me, our back to school staff PD day, since I was new to the district myself, and then I have an SEL specialist on my team, we went to every single school and gave like a 10, 15 minute overview of who we are, what our goals are this year, and how to reach us. And we wanted to do that face to face. We have 10 schools, which is much more manageable than some districts, um, so that we could provide that information with them. Um, the second uh, link of that common language was for our stakeholders. And so that links you to our Center Grove website. Um, under academics, you go to school counseling and mental health, and that's where you'll find these resources. Again, we defined what social emotional learning is, why is it important? Um, and one of the things that we had done new this year that had been um, decided at the last school year before I came on was we had taken um, world language out of our elementary. The kids were receiving that as a special. And then um, instead we have three SEL counselors who provide tier one instruction to our students. So our students get lessons twice a month during special rotation for that. And so that we had a lot of concern about that. And we had a lot of families saying, well, we wanna opt our kid out. Well, we focused specifically in Center Grove, our social emotional learning is focused on regulation, connection and collaboration, because those are tied to the employability skill. And those are in Indiana code, we're required to teach those. So we do not allow parents to opt out their child for that. If their child is at school that day, they will receive that lesson. They can come pick their child up um, if they would like to do that. And we have six, uh, kids who their parents do that every other week, and that is fine. That's their right. Um, but the other thing that <clears throat> we wanted to make sure we did to help with some of that um, angst or just wondering, honestly, some of our families just want to know how to help as well, is we have all of our SEL lessons per, um, provided for the families on our website. And so we are currently building our own curriculum. And so this is where I go back to knowing my community and knowing that right now, Castle 
um, is a hot button for our community. So I couldn't go to our school board and say, hey, we wanna use this curriculum, it's approved by CASEL. That would not have happened. And so um, truthfully, as a professional, I struggle that our lessons aren't necessarily evidence-based. Um, we are pulling in high yield best practices and some research-based stuff that was created when I was at the department, but it isn't evidence-based because we can't do that right now in our, our climate. Um, but we, so we are slowly creating that, the SEL counselors, myself and the SEL specialists. So all of them are listed on our website. I'm gonna pull one up really quick. And what we intentionally did is told parents they would be listed two weeks before the nine weeks started. So that parents would know my kid's gonna get this lesson on this day. And if I don't want them to be a part of it, I can come pick them up. If I'm fine with them being there, great. Um, what we made sure to do was tie every lesson plan to the employability skills, because that's what we're teaching. We also are continuing to use the language SEL in Center Grove until we are told otherwise by legislation. So we've tied them to the SEL competencies. We have a student statement. We talk about the instruction. If we use any video, any book, any PowerPoint, we link that so that parents and guardians and teachers can see exactly what their students are receiving. And then we really took it to um, build a way for our community to provide additional supports because we know, right, that kids should get this at school, home, church, wherever they are in the community. And it's best when we can work together. So we provided teacher extensions that we email to our teachers in addition to guardian extension. So if you wanted to talk about this at home with your kid, you know, they got it this day, here are some lessons and strategies and ideas that you can use. So we post that again, every <clears throat> nine weeks, we post the four lessons. Um, and we do it two weeks before the lessons start. Another thing that we do, so here, this is the second nine weeks because that's where we're at right now. Um, but as you scroll down, you'll see the first nine week, week lessons are there. So if any of you are looking uh, to build lessons, please feel free. These are here for you to use, copy, make them appropriate for your staff and your students. But then we also provided a feedback form on the specific lesson. So I check this every Friday where parents and family members can say, I have a concern about this lesson or I have a question about this lesson. Again, providing that transparency and providing that constant feedback. So that's there for them. Um, <clears throat> I check it every Friday. I've only had four responses and two were positive and two were concerns. And so um, it's one more thing to do, but I think it really helps to build um, that transparency. And then the next thing was kind of looking at, um, so this is for our students, this is for our community, or other information and resources that we had provided. And so as I shared earlier, um, we had a board meeting. We've, I've only had to speak at one board meeting because we felt like we really addressed all of the questions and answers there. Um, I'll probably do an update at the beginning of next year, but we wanted to make sure that all of that was provided here. So we, um, oops, sorry. So we listed, <clears throat> The presentation that I was I gave at the board meeting, so anybody could look at it. It had my sources for the um, research that shows why we believe this is important. So that is all there for stakeholders, family members, anyone to see. Then um, down here, we did list our parent information session, which was held on July 21st. Um, our communications director is pretty sensitive about it because um, some of the questions that were submitted aren't perfect grammar and she's a um, she's very specific about that. So please know that the questions that are listed are in the language of the parents. We did not wanna change how they asked the questions because again, we didn't want them to think we were hiding or doing something different. And so that is why we listed it in that space. Um, one of the things that I borrowed from um, a colleague at HSC was to set norms for that meeting. And so these are norms that we ask our kids to do, our teachers to do. And so our superintendent is the one who led this for that evening and said, here are the things we're gonna do in this meeting. And if you can't abide by that, we will, we will stop the meeting and we will go home or we will ask you specifically to leave if you can't participate. Honestly, that was so helpful just to lay the expectations and to have my superintendent do that so that we knew we were there to learn and we knew that we were there to really understand what everyone's concerns and thoughts were, and it provided a great space for us. But then you'll see, um, we went down and we literally answered every single question and we read it verbatim. It was kind of boring, it was kind of redundant. But again, we wanted them to see, we hear your questions, we're responding to your questions, 
verbally and written so that you have this, so that if you feel like we're not doing what we said we're doing, you can bring it back to us and we'll have that conversation. Um, so that was really helpful for our group as well. And then as I shared earlier, <clears throat> if additional questions came up, we wanted to make sure we addressed that, put together a Q&A on our website that talks about the additional questions that may have been asked. And then we summarized some of the questions. We divided it into SEL, the panorama survey, um, and then just other topics that were pretty much around diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, but a variety of our library books as well. So it's kind of just our other space. Um, this was really helpful for us for several reasons. One, anybody can come and see and read this. Two, as you guys know, the building leaders are the ones who have to answer a lot of questions or you as the counselor or social worker. And so right here, you know, if I had a parent that said, why can't I opt, why can't this be an opt out or who has information for Panorama, the principals or social workers can literally copy and paste this and send it to their family members. So then we're all speaking that same language. So this has been really helpful um, to share that information. It's been really helpful for us as we continue to build that common language among our um, areas. And so you'll see here, we had again, a lot of questions around why can't we opt out of the SEL because we can opt out of Panorama, but why can't we opt out of the actual lessons? And so literally here's the code, the principal can copy and paste that and send that to the family member that has questions or concerns. So that's been really helpful. Amanda, any questions about those resources before I move on? I don't think I see any in the chat box. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so again, common language was really important for us. And so within the board presentation, within the parent night and with on our website, um, one of the things that we decided early on because it had the decision had been made that we were gonna have an SEL rotation, we had to decide, okay, well, what are we gonna teach and how are we gonna teach? And knowing that I think it's about eight states that have banned SEL and critical race theory from schools. We wanted to be intentional knowing that we have a legislative session coming up, knowing um, how Indiana tends to be on certain topics. We wanted to make sure all of the work we're doing this year isn't going to be erased and have to start over again next year. Um, I have been a stickler about continually using the word and language social emotional learning. That might not work in your district. That's been important in our district. And I have really shared that with our school board who's asked and our um, administration who's asked. And I think it's important to keep that language because I think if all of a sudden I switch and call it something different, then parents may feel like, see, you were doing something you weren't supposed to do. You weren't supposed to do that. Um, and so we have, we have stayed with that language, but that might not be doable for your district. So find what works for your community and stick with that language. We have worked really um, also with our, our school teams about talking about those conditions from learning. I know um, Evansville uses that language a lot, but really looking at how does SEL, how does PBIS, how does classroom management build the conditions for learning that also helps our teachers have some ownership on that space because you know they can't oversee the whole school, but they have that ownership on their specific, um, on their specific classroom. And so what are the conditions for learning and how can SEL make your conditions for learning positive and foster a space that's going to have high quality learning. And so we have started to use some of that language as well. So we focused in again on the employability skills because these are within Indiana code, which can be overturned. If you have not seen um, the parent bill of rights that our attorney general has put together, um, there is a part on the 2.0 that says to parents, if you feel like the employability skills are teaching critical race theory or SEL, we can petition to have those removed. So that is always an option that that could happen. However, um, Indiana code tends to be a little bit harder to overturn and how much attention and focus has been on our secondary and our workforce. Um, and this being kind of just a state, all the state agencies coming together with the employability skills, we felt comfortable starting here. And um, now I'm gonna forget if there's 17 or 18, but regardless, I would, I would argue that the majority of those um, employability skills 
truly are social emotional learning skills. These three are just the ones that are spoken specifically in that language, um, connection, regulation, and collaboration. And so that is what we have built our K-5 curriculum on, and we are starting to build that into secondary as well. And so that is the language we have used. That is where we have stayed, and we continually go back to that Indiana code. Um, in our community, when you look at the definition of connection, it talks about social awareness and cultural sensitivity. Those are um, words that raise flags in our district for good or bad reasons. And so we wanted to define again what that means for us. What does social awareness look like? What does cultural competence or sensitivity look like here in our district? And so we did define that as a group of educators and um, administrators. We had a group that went through and defined what that looked like. And then um, maybe a month or so ago, myself and our superintendent, um, and my boss provided a professional development that was to everybody. So everybody got on Zoom, the secondary got on at one time and the elementary got on another time. And we just talked about having critical conversations and what does it mean to have a critical conversation? What are some buzzwords um, that bring some angst in our district? What are some things we just wanted our teachers to feel supported? I don't know about you all, but our teachers feel like everything they say and do is being watched. And so we wanted to provide them with some strategy supports um, so that they could feel as though administration really had their back when they were teaching content and being specific in some of these hot hot topics or just even some of the um, you know political conversation that's happening that's brought in from students. And so we defined these two words for them. We explained what this means. We explained how this looks. This was one of those um, spaces where we felt like common language was really important. And so we did that um, with all of our certified staff and we will do it with our paraprofessionals and other staff as well. Um, but that was helpful for us again to build off that common language. We also did continually go back and say what social emotional learning is and we tie it into our mission and vision. So looking at your mission and vision or what that looks like in your district, ours is to provide an exceptional educational experience for all students. And so we even dig deeper into that on our website about what that looks like and what that um, exceptional educational experience should be for any student who walks through our doors. And so we tie SEL to that and the importance behind that. Again, I already shared, we um, tie all of our SEL to the employability skills. So if you don't know, um, there are standards within that. There's a document on the DOE's website that I can also link in here in a moment. Um, but this was really helpful for us to say to parents, in these lessons, these are the skills and standards that we're meeting. And then we've also been able to do a lot of pre and post tests with our students to see, are they meeting these standards? Are they um, being able to accomplish them after the lesson? And then asking teachers to give us some feedback as far as what they look like in their space. So these are the uh, standards for regulation, connection, and collaboration. Um, and I just think that having that standard and tying that to a student statement within our lessons, again, gives it that credibility and ties it even more so with how it's important in academics to be successful. Um, here is how uh, the Virginia Beach, I just wanted to give a different district who has different demographics than our district, um, how they looked at their common language. They had a core message and then they had a variety of key messages that supported that. So that's linked for you all as well in the presentation. <clears throat> So the other thing that we really wanted to focus on was identifying the myths. Um, so we had a lot of questions, concerns. And so we always encourage family members, stakeholders, teachers to come and have conversations with myself, my superintendent and our um, assistant superintendent if they wanted about what do you think that this looks like? What are your concerns? And so we could truly hear from them. And a lot of times they would come in and be concerned that we were teaching critical race theory. And we would ask, what is critical race theory to you? And they would either be able to explain it or not. And then we would say, this is how we view critical race theory. And that is not what we're teaching in the K-12 space. That is something that is done at the college level. Um, <clears throat> We've had a lot of concern around SEL and mindfulness teaching other religious practices. And again, we go back to the fact that we're a public school. We're not teaching religious practices. We are teaching kids ways to have coping strategies to handle stress, which does involve breathing and it does involve movement. But again, the science shows us that we have to prime a student's brain to be ready to learn. And so those are some of the strategies that are rooted in research that help to build that. 
And we've also talked with our, um, I'm sure many of your schools use Go Noodle and they do different yoga movements. And those have been words that have been uh, red flags currently in our district. So we've just said, can you guys talk about them? Brains ready to learn. Can you talk about it being a brain interval? Um, you're not changing what you're doing, but you're explaining it a little bit better to families of the purpose behind it and when we're doing it. Um, we had a lot of the concerns around SEL should be taught at home and not at school. I agree it should be taught at home, but we all know that it isn't taught in every home. And so it is important that we provide that structure for our students at school. I'm not a parent, but I always tell um, people that I have seen my friends and my family members be parents, pretty tough job. And I think it would be wonderful if we could be in a partnership in that space of why these skills are so important for our students to leave K-12 space and be successful, right? Our ultimate goal is to educate them, but our overarching goal is that when they leave our K-12 space, they are a productive citizen in the community that they choose to live in. And that is more than just academics. And so we share that language, speak that language a lot with our families and stakeholders. And it's been helpful to have some of our business partners share that too, how much we want our students to come back to the Center Grove community, but that they're seeing some of their employees not have these skills, which is making it very hard in the workforce. And so having that perspective has been really helpful as well. Um, one of my uh, favorite sayings that I've heard, gosh, I can't even remember who said it, is just talking about the importance of we must Maslow before we bloom um, and how that's really important and asking teachers, what do you think that looks like in practice? Um, just for time purposes, I'm not going to, but I was at a uh, PD last week out in Denver and I, they actually showed this video of Maslow before bloom. And I was like, this is so wonderful. So I plan to send this to some of our teachers to say, here are five quick strategies that you can implement that really helps to build that connection and collaboration. So uh, again, you'll have access to that so that you can watch that. But again, I think it's really important for our teachers to give them concrete examples of what this looks like in practice. Again, building that con condition for learning. Oh. <clears throat> Sorry. I don't wanna play this, but my, okay, sorry, my tabs are all open. So then we had to look at what is our current reality? This was shared with family. This was shared with um, administrators. This was shared with all of our stakeholders. Here are what we have for all of our students, some of our students and few of our students. And again, there continued to be a concern about, well, you're gonna run Panorama, take my kids data, put them in a group and I'm never gonna know. And we were like, that's absolutely not true. If your child needs something that is different than all students, we ask for either parent permission or we reach out to say, hey, we're providing the support for your student. You're the expert in your student. Any additional resources that could be helpful for us? Anything that you think we need to know? Here are the things that we're seeing. And so we use this to identify, these are our current reality. This is what we're providing. And this is what it looks like again in Center Grove. Continually using that language of this is what it looks like in Center Grove was helpful for our families. Um, and then this is what we're using to identify our gaps and where we can be stronger and where we can provide additional supports as we move forward. Um, one of the things, uh, I think a lot of this I already talked about. Yep, so we wanted to say we were posting the lessons. You could see them. All of our, this was something that was added because we had some concerns um, in our district about classroom lessons that were done by the school counselors and social workers. And those previously, um, the counseling team and all of um, the social workers, they were under a variety of directors. So it used to be special ed, then it was curriculum. And now that our my position's here, it's under me. But we have all of them submit what their lessons look like, and we try to streamline them as much as we can. So that if I'm a student at school A and I move to school B, I'm getting the same content. Um, and so those lessons go through myself um, and our teaching and learning team to make sure that we have eyes on them, to make sure that we all say, yes, this is great content for our kids um, and we really want them to have it. And then again, we're posting all of that on our website. Uh, we will be doing over Christmas break, we will be posting the secondary lessons that have been taught. Um, because classroom guidance lessons have been taught for so long at the secondary, we haven't had as much concern as we did about the SEL rotation for the younger kids because that was new. So we focused most of our efforts there, but we will be starting to upload the secondary stuff so that you all can see that as well. Um, two of the things that we did that I wanted to share <clears throat> was we used our 
uh, COVID funding for two different ways. One, we were seeing kids coming into school, um, not having some of those skills, very dysregulated. And so we created, well, it was before me, they created um, a program called Ready, Set, K. So basically it was kind of like a little boot camp for students. But what they did was when we do our kindergarten, kindergarten roundup where they check all their academics, we also had pulled some of the panorama questions and had parents fill those out. We also looked at had that student had any preschool um, background, did we know anything about the family and get some input. And from that list, we identified our students who may struggle the most with social, not even academics. We really, we wanted the academics. We felt that that was important, but we knew from our kindergarten teachers that those behaviors, what was really challenging was that those kids didn't have that. And so we were able to invite 85 of our students to attend that. And their day, uh, their day was very structured in the sense of they focused on classroom rules, um, regulation and academics. And so they all had different skills that they were working on and they created lessons around that. Here's how we feel this in our body. Here's how we ask for help. Just kind of those readiness skills that they need. Um, and so we have seen a lot of success with that. And we're looking at those 85 students that attended where they are now, um, what improvements we've seen, feedback from teachers. And so that's been really great. We then used COVID relief dollars for our secondary and we called it our SPARK program, which was a summer program to accelerate readiness and connection. And it was really focused on identifying building relationships for middle school students. Last year, our middle school and our high school went back and forth between in-person hybrid, um, totally online. And so we had a, several students who were identified as just being disengaged. And then we also looked at our students that um, how many have them have the skill or lack the skills or how many of them lack the will to do the work. And we looked at the students with that will as opposed to the skill, because we wanted to bring them in and really be intentional in their space. That was 30 students from both of our middle schools. Um, they 100% focused on um, social, emotional relationship building. We took those students panorama data and said, here's where they're low. Let's build some lessons around that. Um, myself and the teacher and the administrator that led that. And one of the things that has been such a celebration and awesome for us to share is because those 30 students were here last year, we were able to look at their spring NWA to their fall NWA. And not only did we see an increase, but we are, we saw a growth and also an increase in a lot of the students that attended that program. And so for us, that's the data to continue to show how important the relationship connection and collaboration is to all of our students. And so that's something that we continue to go back to and share um, as we look at building those resources. <clears throat> um, I already showed you guys that. So then we really wanted to focus on our staff well-being. Um, as we all know, uh, we felt this way when I was at the state, we rushed to provide uh, supports for students and we missed our staff. And then since then, our staff's been through a pandemic. You all have been through a pandemic. And I'm worried about them. I'm worried about their well-being. I'm worried about uh, the burnout. I'm worried if we'll have enough teachers in the future. And so we really wanted to be intentional to say, okay, what also are we doing for our staff? We, within the Panorama survey, we also had a spring, last spring, we surveyed all of our certified and non-certified staff that would want to provide information. And that helped us build out what we're doing this year to support well-being. Um, so we have provided adult well-being staff, so um, strategies, supports to help with their stress. We've also really focused on our administrators, um, concerned about them as well. Dr. Signs, um, maybe you know him, maybe you don't, but he does a great job of providing um, just how do we handle stress? Let's talk about emotional intelligence. And so we are doing a three session specific to our administrators. So all of our system principals, all of our central office staff, all of our principals, and then also all of our deans attend um, once a month a business meeting. And so we've been able to free up an hour at three of those business meetings where Dr. Science has joined us virtually and we've worked through how they as an administrator can handle and focus on their stress. Um, the other thing that we did early on was we, I met with all of the building level principals only, and we talked about what are the things that they can control and what are the things that they cannot control and what are the things that we're doing that we could maybe let sit a little this year. Um, one of the things that came from our community and just the need 
of constant parent emails and wanting responses immediately, you know, we have a 24 hour policy to respond to a, a parent, but a lot of our educators don't feel like they really have that. They feel like they need to respond right away. So we had several schools who um, allowed their teachers to put an out on office on their email that says, we are working on our well being as educators. We are now spending time with our family. Uh, we will be back first thing in the morning. If it's an emergency, please contact your family doctor or 911. We will uh, respond to you first thing in the morning. And what each building principal did was send something to all the families to say, hey, we're really trying to be intentional with this. You may see this out of office. It doesn't mean that we don't care for you, that we don't care for your student. We're just providing boundaries for our staff and we will get back to you as soon as we can, but it will not be past office hours. Um, and so does everybody do it? No. Do we still have people that respond? Yes. But does it give the permission to those who are feeling like that's one more thing they can step back from? Yes. And so that's been really helpful. Um, and that's been something that's come from that, which we've been excited about. And then every Friday <clears throat> I send a wellness reminder. Um, People can delete it, they can disregard it. Um, just a simple 30 second read or listen um, to help them in their well being. And it's specifically to them as professionals. It isn't like then go do this with your student, it's specific to them. Um, I alluded to this a little bit that we have our whole child uh, wellness district, and that is what's gonna help us kind of continue to move this work forward. Um, we do have school staff, we have our union represented on their stakeholders and students. Um, something we were intentional about was we did not pick all school staff and all stakeholders that were like, yes, we love this. We picked some people that have some good challenges and have some thoughts and some things that they're like, eh, I don't know if this is right for school. That helps us be stronger. That helps us know how to communicate that and it's constructive. And so we were really intentional with who we picked for that community. Ugh. We were really intentional with who we picked for that committee. Um, and then in addition to be able to respect um, the school staff doing that after school, we pay them a stipend from our title grants um, so that they can be there and participate, but also that's a small way that we can honor their time. Here are several resources that I thought may be helpful for you all um, as you look at resources and supports that you may need as you're developing your common language, as you're developing what might be best for your community. Um, wanted to list those for you. I know Amanda has already shared a couple of those in her newsletter. Um, again, the self-care for educator podcast, like if that's one small thing you can do is sending that to your staff. It's a 10 minute quick. It's not like an interview thing. Um, it's really wonderful about just really being intentional. And I would challenge all of you and, and the roles that you play, what are you doing for your well-being? I had not realized personally how much, um, feeling as though I needed to be on the defense, feeling as um, just all the crisis that are in our students, that how much that was weighing on my heart. Um, and so after I went last week to this, um, uh, excuse me, this professional development, one of the things she encouraged us to do was just to take gratitude. We all know what um, is a part of gratitude. And so the group of us that went, we have kind of a challenge going of not sure if you've ever heard of um, the app that's called, I think it's called One Second Every Day or something. Um, yeah. And so for the month of December, we're taking a video, just one second of something each day that we're grateful for. And then at the end of December, we'll share that amongst those of us who went. Um, but then I'll also have that personally. So on those days that are really tough, I it reminds me you haven't picked your one second and it helps me just kind of um, be intentional with my well-being and my gratitude. So I know most of you on here tend to be in that helping role and a similar counseling um, administrative role. And so I really encourage not only for you to share this with your staff, but what are the things that you're doing to support your well-being um, as well? So I have talked a lot at you. Um, I would love to open up for questions. I'm comfortable. I don't think um, there has been anything in the chat, but I'm comfortable even if people wanted to... Um, if people wanted to come off and ask questions or ask suggest or provide suggestions. Um, okay, actually I do see a couple things in here. Hold Chris, on. Yeah, Christy, <laughs> Sorry. There, you're fine. There have been a couple questions. Um, so I'll just share them so you don't have to scroll through. Yeah. The first question was, and I don't think you answered this, maybe you did. In states where SEL has been banned, do school counselors still do individual and group sessions? 
and just not the classroom lessons? So I couldn't speak specifically for those states. Um, I could speak to the fact that if you're doing ongoing individual and group sessions, I think it's best practice to have parent permission. And so as long as you are obtaining that parent permission, um, what we have done, one thing that we've done differently this year is when we've obtained parent permission, we have written what curriculum we're using. So if we're using zones of regulation, if we're using the Dove project for self-esteem, we've written that. And we, um, this is a, a good thing too, we have told parents, if you want to see the curriculum, you are more than welcome to come in and view the curriculum. We are not sending it electronically because things can be cut and pasted to look differently. So they are more than welcome to come view that at any time. Um, and so I would think is if you're providing those direct service on a regular basis, you would need parent permission or at least parent notification. Um, so that I would think that would cover you. Great question. The next question um, or it was kind of a request. Um, can we see the questions that you gave to your parents for the kindergarten roundup? Yep. Yep. It's just four simple questions from Panorama and I will pull that up. Yes, okay. I will. Or if you want to send those to me, I can include them in a follow-up email yep. too. That's fine. That's probably faster. Yeah. Yep. The next question was, um, have you addressed administrators violating, violating office hours? Meaning asking parent or asking teachers to do stuff outside of that. Is that the question? Um, Tim, if you want to clarify, maybe, or you can clarify in the chat if you want. And then um, I'll move on while we're maybe waiting for more info on that one. The next question is, will we have uh, access to recording? Yes. Um, you, everybody who registered will receive an email probably in the next day or two that will include the link to the recording as well as the slides. Yep. Uh, and then another question, how often are SEL lessons presented at the high school level? So that is an area that we are growing in. Our secondary does not currently um, get SEL on a consistent regular basis. Our secondary um, middle schools, one day a week of their homeroom, they get some type of lesson. Um, at the high school, it looks a little different. Some of them are in a freshman class where they address some of this. Sometimes they get it every other day in their study block, like occasionally. So that is not um, as defined. And that is our next step to work on after we have elementary um, up and running for this year. Good question. <clears throat> and then Tim just clarified, he said, yes, just as far as respecting teacher boundaries. So we have, um, I've had a lot of conversations with administrators about modeling. Um, and so understanding the fact that at 10 PM to 11 PM, if that's the time that works best for you to get emails done and that helps you sleep better at night, um, that's fine, but did you also know that you can send a delayed email where you can email all night long and it won't show up to them until seven or 8 a.m.? We've really encouraged that. Um, we've actually had a couple of our principals and this was really hard, so I, um, I say that in hopes of like giving that. They took um, a day and went and met with every single teacher or grade level, whatever they preferred, and just heard their concerns. And then they took back, so they kind of did what I did with them. So then they took back, that list compiled all of that list into a concerns and then identified the things they could control and the things they couldn't and responded to the staff of like, Hey, we hear you with this. We can't control that. That's a state mandate. That's a something X or Y, but here's what we can control. And here's how we're going to do that. Um, our teacher union is also pretty strong in our district. And so, um, we continually are reminded from the union about, um, those boundaries and being intentional. So we do have those conversations frequently. Um, does it never happen? Probably not, but I do think they're much more intentional with it this year um, because I think they're feeling it from central office, right? So if we're modeling at central office, but we're hoping they're modeling to their staff. Um, hopefully it'll have that trickle down effect. So good question. <laughs> Thank you, Christy. I think we are about out of time and I'm not seeing any more questions in the chat. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out here. Um, just a few really quick things. As you can see on the slide here, we do have a session evaluation. Please complete this. Um, it not only helps us as we plan for future professional development, 
but it's also the way that you can receive if you want PGP points or if you are an active member of INSWA and if you want CEUs, this is the way for you to get those. So you do need to complete the session evaluation in order to receive those. Like I already said, this will be available um, on demand. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. On demand, so you'll receive a link to that um, following the, um, well, in the next day or two. We have some upcoming events that I wanted to make you aware of here. Um, we have a statewide virtual networking opportunity in addition to a presentation on compassion resilience that's scheduled in early January. We will be kicking off a culturally responsive SEL series it will be a four-part series from January to April, so um, be sure to register for that. And session two of our comprehensive school counseling series is coming up in early February. And finally, we are planning a book study that will probably be starting around February. So if you are um, interested in all in that, then there is a form here for you to vote on the book that we um, will be reading as a community. We appreciate all of our partners, ISCA, INSWA, DOE, and then of course, all of our members of our tactic teams. On this slide, you'll see all of the contact information for the Counselor Connect team, as well as a link to subscribe to our monthly newsletter so that you can stay up to date on all of the um, upcoming events. And with that, I believe that is all I have. I will um, link in that, uh, session evaluation for those of you who don't have it, if you want to get that before you jump off. Otherwise, thank you so much again for joining us, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Take care, everybody. Thanks. I'll put my email in there, Amanda. So if anybody wants to reach out, more than willing to help however Perfect. I can. So feel free. Thank you, Christy. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.